having the whole player to tackle and he chooses to go high and hit them in the head. Um, I mean, it had a really... I'm convinced. I think he, I think he, he bounces up. Do you? Yeah, I think... I think if he was a different player, he wouldn't have got the same amount of ban. I mean, he's an absolute idiot and I've got very little sympathy for him. But I personally don't think it's as bad as a lot of stuff um, that we've been seeing. Um, I mean, the the speed he went into it and the fact that he had everything else to go out, you know, it looked like a yellow card, like without a shadow of a doubt to me. Um, But yeah, I guess... It's hard to say, isn't it, about the sort of point of impact and if it bounced up because yeah, we only get I, that one long camera shot of it. There's one angle and it's not very close, um, but I felt that he bounced up. But, you know, there are other ways of tackling, aren't there? Yeah, I think the thing that really goes against him is that fact that the the, 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 the player who took the ball was stood up and he could have tackled him anywhere else. Like the other guy that went in from Leeds did, tackled him round the waist. Um <laughs> Yeah, he can't stop himself, can he? He'd started the game really well. He'd scored two tries. He was starting to work his way back into the good books of, of Leeds. And now I think I saw something that said by the end of his ban, he'll have missed nine of Leeds' 17 games by that point of this season, which is just... So he's back in the lead of Luke Gale, the number of which he's missed. <laughs> yeah, probably so, yeah. But only just... And both of them can't help themselves, can they? No. Uh, I mean, I think the thing that goes against James Bentley is that he's James Bentley. Well, he's never going to get away with anything once he's up in front of the panel, is he? No. Because he's got such a bad record. Um, and it's all recent as well. It's all since yeah. he came back from his injury last season. It wasn't even like he had a terrible record. You know, he wasn't a, a clean player, but he wasn't a dirty player at the same time. He was a tough, hard player, I thought, before he came back from his ban last year and went absolutely psychotic. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure why Leeds signed him because I just think surely he's a liability. I think they signed him whilst he was still injured last year, not expecting him to come back and be banned every week. Fair enough, yeah. Yeah, but because I'd thought the same and then then I'd I'd tracked it back in my mind and I thought, and I kind of think, thought that's what had happened, yeah. Um, Yeah. Leeds will want to play Wakefield every week, though, won't they? Uh, probably their two most convincing performances this season have been against Wakefield. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, just to round things off, Jay Pitts from Wakefield have got a grade A dangerous contact charge, one match penalty notice for him. Um, and a line on Wakefield have entered into a dual registration partnership with Championship yeah. Club Sheffield Eagles. So, so that'll help Sheffield bolster their playing staff. Yep. Okay, I haven't got anything else on this one. I don't know. I don't... No, oh, I, I have... did. So... Sorry, I did have something else to say on this one, Sarah. Go for it. One thing I noticed looking at the lineup is Leeds actually had a spine. It's, it's not the greatest spine. I, you know, I don't think Hardacre's a great attacking fullback. I don't think Richie Myler's a the perfect answer at half back. But they had a one, six, seven, and nine who were a one, six, seven, and nine. So they had round pegs in round holes. So that yeah. must have helped them a little bit. And the other thing I noticed from the brief highlights I saw of the game was Cam Smith, who we've talked about pretty much every week before this week as going both ways on the stats, having big meters and big tackle numbers. Well, he didn't make the stats round up this week, but his involvements when you watched the highlights were quite influential and telling. He... he was involved in the, the the passing play for at least two of Leeds' tries. So maybe he's being put more as a kind of ball-playing loose forward type under Rowan Smith and actually yeah. being encouraged to play a bit more and maybe not work at, not, not use all his energy up in the in the work stuff and let other people do that sort of stuff. Because yeah. he is a talented forward in, in terms of ball skills. He's played a bit of halfback, hasn't he, when he's had to. Um, so that was interesting to see. Just to start, start to see the little bit of changes Leeds are making under Smith. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Now I definitely don't have anything else to say on this game. Be sure. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, next game was the Friday night televised game it was Salford versus Castleford uh, it was 16-6 to Salford at half time and they hammered home that advantage to win 30 points to 14 at the end 5,355 is a decentish crowd for for, Castle, for Salford I mean um, Liam Moore was the referee 
Uh, in terms of the stats, they were incomplete team stats because there's no Ryan Hampshire yet on the Super League website. He, even though he scored a try in this game, he, he doesn't get a full stats right up at the moment, unfortunately. Hopefully that'll come in time. But what about the other individuals that were showing up in the stats roundups? Yes, yeah, so uh, for Salford, Joe Burgess scored three tries, made six tackle for bus, 141 metres and four clean breaks. And Yakas with 45 tackles, 10 of which were marker tackles and five tackle busts. Callum Watkins with one try assist, 116 metres. Tim Lafay with one try, two try assists, five tackle busts, 101 metres and three offloads. For the losing Castleford, it was Joe Westerman with 120 metres. Jason Gary Gary with two tries, five tackle busts and 110 metres and three clean breaks. And George Lawler with 106 metres. In the fan views, always in our shadow said, Budgie was flying, Tim was laughing, Sneed was sneeding, I still miss him, in brackets. Uh, Gary took his try as well, but Cass well beaten, Radford out. <laughs> um, fat boy Re- Rob said, fuck, dot, off, dot, Liam, dot, more, dot. Um, he I needs thought he re- needed the uh, punctuation in there as well. He needs to read your blog, doesn't he? Uh, SL Review said Rhythm and Salford just too good for the piss the bed <laughs> do you know what I'm a bit disappointed that we didn't get more more fan reviews on this one it was the televised game I must admit myself I didn't watch it live I, I was out on Friday night and then watched it when I got back so maybe other people did the same and were, didn't think to then get in a, a fan review form but I thought Salford played some really nice stuff and were definitely the better side I don't know Look, Adam Milner might have wanted to argue with the ref when the game was pretty much over anyway and get Simbin, but I, I just can't see anything else that was controversial particularly. I just thought Salford were the better side. Yeah, definitely. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good match. Um, Entertaining, but in a different way to the one the night before. Yeah. Um, you know, and... I thought Lafay was excellent um, on the hurl. Um, and, yeah, Sneed just showed his game management, you know, kicking a 20-40 at that point in the game when when potentially the tables are just starting to change slightly. I felt Cass yeah. was starting to dominate things. Defensively, they were, you know, they were really strong. And then to have that 20-40, I mean, it must be so destroying for... For a team, you know, you've really had, you've really done well with your uh, defence, and then a player comes up with a player like that, which undoes everything that you've just done. Yeah, in, in the context of the game, it was a few minutes after Gary Gary's first try, which I thought came against the run of play somewhat. Um, although Cast did kind of start both halves slightly better, uh, maybe than Solver did, but Solver were better for for the rest of both halves. But um, Set and it set up position, didn't it, from that 20-40. For Salford won a penalty. They opened up a two-score lead again. And then, pretty much off the back of that, they rolled all the way up the field and scored the the, the cross try, which, to me, pretty much made me com- like know what way the result was going to go. So it was a big pivotal play, a big moment, and that's classic Mark Snide. It is, yeah. Um, and... I have to mention Morgan Escari playing hide and seek behind the posts. I didn't pick up on this. Go on. <laughs> so there was a the kick went through um, from Castleford, and to be honest, it should have been dealt with before it hit before it got to the in girl area, but it wasn't. Escari scoops up the ball in the in girl area. Look, he he goes in like from between the sticks so you assume he's picking it up his his uh turning circle will bring him out of where these sticks are but he stops dead behind the post and comes back the way he's gone <laughs> and of course the defenders go to cut off his line of run and tackle him in girl um outside of the h's effectively but he's inside and gets clear away oh do you know what I, I don't remember that play like i say i did watch it after i'd been out so um maybe it's just one that passed me by <laughs> but it's funny anyway uh, i was it happy was to see joe... comedy moments <laughs> i was dead happy to see joe burgess get a hat trick mostly because it, it gives me memories of back on the 19th of february 2017 when he 
did it against Cronulla in the World Cup Challenge. But um, but yeah, he showed he's, he's still got some pace, he's still got some ability. Um, but his hat trick was really, you know, in a sort of way, overshadowed by the fact that he scored his hat trick try off that laugh eye offload. That was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was it was it was good at Salford with value for money, and you know I just got to say as well how much I respect what's going on behind the scenes at Salford. You know they're giving away these tickets within schools, but they're doing a lot of work on the back of it, and like having the players out there signing autographs and yeah, they're trying to like give the kids an experience that'll make them want to go back. Yeah. yeah, you know, let's face it, if you're in Salford, then you're probably going to be a Man United fan. What chance have you ever got of a player from Man United having the first to take with you, of you being able to go pitch side at their ground? Yeah. And then suddenly you go to this ground, you see a great performance, a, a good match, um, and then the players are down there taking, having photos and all the rest of it. I just think it's, um, yeah, it's really good yep um just to note on Cass I just think Gary Gary keeps showing like what what he's got a great speed for his first try a great burst of speed to get that one scored but also a really good tight finish for his second it went up as a no try didn't it because it yeah, was yeah he did well to keep his arm up didn't he very close yeah very very good body control to keep his body up just long enough to get that ball down so um he he keeps flying you've got to say he's um he's going really well yeah Sad news out of Salford that King Vuni Yaiwa, who's been probably their best forward, um, and Jack Wells, um, they've both been ruled out for the remainder of the season, Paul Rowley's confirmed. So that's a shame for them, but it didn't hamper them in this game. Um, but we'll see how that affects them as the season goes along. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Saturday, Channel 4 were back on with Rugby League and they were showing Hulk KR versus Catalans. It was actually 8-4 to Hull KR at half time but it finished 20 points to 8 to the Catalans 7,199 were there Tom Grant was also there to referee um, in terms of the team stats Hull KR actually made slightly more ground and made four fewer errors than Catalans did but um, Ledrax made their ground at a better average gain and made three breaks to one discipline is an area for Hull KR to fix up nine penalties to five in that count and that did play a part in the final score too didn't it with a couple of penalty goals rounding out the yes. scoring from Catalans in this one. Um, what about the individual stats? So uh, it was Mathieu Laguerre with one try and 196 metres, Tom Davies with one try, five tackle busts and 160 metres, and Arta Morg with five tackle busts and 102 metres. And for the losing team, it was Ryan Hall with five tackle busts and 168 metres, Lachlan Coop with 142 metres, Ben Crooks with one try, nine tackle bust 139 metres and Sean Kenny Dow with 130 metres and three offloads. Yeah, Ben Crooks reminded us of his great leaping abilities, didn't he? We'd, we've not seen that for a, for a while uh, yeah. for him for his first try of the year. Alan Walker got in touch. He said, dinner time, chefing, it is I scored again, Brusque dominated again and Eldrax did the business. At least the dinner was better. Uh, always in our shadow says what's it like to score a try turtle crap from both teams dragons gave the Dobbins so many chances look like they want to do 20 passes to score pity they can't catch that many <laughs> Dr. Bob Phillips said well it was an entertaining first half but the second was stodgy tired and error strewn Robbins didn't seem to be playing as a team and despite their supporters didn't want it enough yeah, I mean, this was um, a match that, uh, again, Rovers had flooded the local um, clubs with tickets, um, you know, I, and you saw them going round, didn't you? Oh, sorry, uh, there's one to come, sorry. SL Review says, it was looking good, or at least competitive, but OKR, but the end was far from OK. Dog Allen's just too much class. <laughs> Yeah, so you were saying that they did a, a big big push to get local juniors into the game as well. I guess that's yeah. what people need to do when, when you've got Catalans in town rather than 
argue like rather than moaning about them not bringing away fans is you know try and create your own atmosphere with yeah with so something. they're doing a, a, a 